Dude, before we do get into it, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Dude, I, I was, um, when I was editing last week's episode, when we talked about the Kisaragi station, mm -hmm. I cannot believe, I thought of this, you know, after the fact, and other listeners had sent us messages and, and theories and all this. One of the things that I just feel like an absolute idiot about is this. So Brendan, the guy who originally sent us the, uh, the hey man, check this out, you know, from Tasmania, mm -hmm. he wrote and said that he always kind of felt like tunnels and stuff mm -hmm. were almost like the gateway to these, to being quote unquote spirited away. Mm. And when he said it that way, I thought, my God, I am a moron. Both of us are. Think about the movie, Spirited Away. Oh, yeah. I don't know how long it's been since you've seen it, and I don't want to spoil it for anybody that's just really ah, so good, getting into anime, but the girl basically and her family go to this, their car gets like stranded or something, and yeah. anyhow, she has to go into this tunnel, dude. You remember? Man, it's very vague. I remember they, they she's sort of walking around like, and there's like these like stones, and it's like at the bottom of like a driveway, Kind of, yeah. Sort of so looking thing. Basically, there's like this tunnel that goes into this like mountainside. She, I think for some reason, it's been a while that I've seen it too, but like for some reason she gets separated from her parents mm -hmm. and then she goes into this tunnel thinking, oh, maybe they, they went this way. And then she's just like transported into this other world. And then the movie essentially is her trying to figure out how to get out and back yeah. and like pretty common parents turn into like pigs or something like that. Yeah, I mean, It's intense. Weird. It's mm -hmm. weird. It's not necessarily a kid's cartoon. But it's a great movie and it ends really awesome and it's just beautiful visually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to me, to me, I think for you folks that, well, I don't know. I mean, you are kind of right. I mean, there are some like super like abstract sort of concepts. You know, like like I would say Princess Mononoke, Spirited Away, and Howl's Moving Castle. Those are like my three favorite uh, Miyazaki movies. And like to us, it's it's very like commonplace, which you kind of had a late start. Like you just yeah, watched yeah, those. just watched them like within the last year. Yeah. Yeah, so how did you feel watching them? Pretty weird? Well, I just know that like, no, I didn't feel weird. I, I, if I was like 10, I'd probably be like, oof. I mean, some of the concepts and stuff are. It's bizarre. They, they're just culturally, I think that yes. they would be more like scary than they would be interesting for my mm -hmm. kids right now. Mm -hmm. Um but, you know, as an adult, it's like, wow. I mean, some of the stuff is just incredible. The world building this guy does. and the, it's It is amazing. The art itself is just yeah. mind-boggling, man. Yeah, the, uh, I think, I think. I mean, it's, it is funny that, you know, we actually spoke a little bit about this in the last episode, but I think, I think if you do want to see, like, examples of, like, yokai or, or the sort of Japanese idea of, like, this sort of catch-all of, like, spirits or like beings or entities those Miyazaki movies are perfect because I mean especially Princess Mononoke there's like you know like the little like forest sprite spirits that their mm -hmm. heads turn mm -hmm. and then like the the like the giant like stag like elk yeah. uh so cool man um dude let me just say this like so here's the premise of Spirited Away and this is again why I thought of it after the fact, after the episode was recorded, I thought, man, we got to talk about this. Mm -hmm. So this little girl and her parents mm -hmm. moved to a small Japanese town in the countryside. Well, yep. on their way to their new house, her dad makes a wrong turn and drives down a lonely one laid road, which dead ends in, t in front of a tunnel. Her parents mm -hmm. decide to stop the car and explore the area. And I got to say, as a parent, I'm not... When I make a wrong turn, I'm not like, oh, let's use this opportunity to turn it into an exploration hike. I'm like, everybody get in the car, be quiet, I got to pay attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When they go through the tunnel, they find this abandoned amusement park on the other side with its own little town. I forget Then her about parents that. see like a restaurant with good smelling food, no staff, and so they decide to eat now and pay later, basically. The young girl refuses to eat, and that's why she's not transformed. But anyways, so the whole rest of the way is like this young girl discovering who she is and becoming a almost a hero, really, trying to save her parents and, and make everything right. But mm -hmm. the fact that they went through a tunnel, found this abandoned town, yeah, you know, it's mm -hmm. uh, it's very interesting. And I think that this movie came out in two thousand one, so. 
I'm not saying that Miyazaki did this, but I'm just saying it is reasonable Mm -hmm. that he could have heard this story and then created something from it. Or there that 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 lore behind these tunnels and passageways exists already in Japan and it's just like both sort of stories or situations were kind of built upon them or something. Well to me that's super interesting because if you're into I mean it's it's kind of a vast sort of topic but I think especially me like I I bring it up like a good bit on the show but like you know if you're into the like docu series I guess called Hellier or there's another podcast called Penny Royal, which is really cool. These are both American, U.S. based, but like there is that idea that I mean, it's not new by any means, but it's that idea that like you have these, you know, it's a, it gets a little into like Hollow Earth, and then the idea that like you know, in like the Appalachia uh, or Appalachia, there's the most cave systems in all the world mm-hmm. over here in America. You know, from like Kentucky to you know, the little Appalachian, like, little trek. And, you know, you can get into, like, military bases and, like, I mean, it it just, it kind of goes crazy. But I've never thought of it in the, from the perspective of, like, in another country. So I think that's, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. It it reminds me a little bit of, um, which this isn't Japanese, I think this is in China, that new cave that they found. Do you remember Wasn't hearing about this? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember that. This is like maybe a year, year and a half ago, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, there's there's this... Ugh, boy, we're... Well, sure believe we're it or not, not. <laughs> believe it or not, this actually has a lot to do with what we're going to talk about today. Oh, really? Well, there's some good connective tissue. Okay. Well, uh, d- long story short, they... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, long story short, there's like... They ended up finding this this cave that is like so... It's like... I think like the entire entirety of like New York City could mm. fit inside of it. It's so vast and so big that it has like its own wet like weather system inside what? of it. Yeah, it's completely uh, undiscovered until like you know last year, two years ago, or something. But that's really fascinating. This just in: the mole man of Hackney made his way to China and built an <laughs> even bigger world. <laughs> he sure did. He's like, you know, I think I just want to hang out here and just keep on digging. I hear you. Hey, folks, welcome back to another episode of your favorite podcast, That Would Be Rad, a podcast that majors in 80s and 90s nostalgia, comic culture, all things paranormal, and miners in retro video games, tabletop RPGs, pre-internet mysteries, and raising our kids to be half as cool as we were back in the 80s. We're your hosts, Woody Brown. And Tyler Bentz. Was that my throat or yours? <laughs> no, I think that was actually mine this time. Oh, cool. I just took a big gulp of my, my Red Bull, <sighs> sugar-free Red Bull. One of these days, there'll be a sponsor, and I won't uh, be able to, yeah, I just don't like, yeah, I just don't drink those things anymore, really. I mean, boy, I wish they would hurry up and sponsor us because at this point, God knows how much money I've spent on sugar-free Red Bull. Yeah. Maybe we just create our own energy drink. Yeah, they're never good, though, man. Yeah, no. That's All the other ones are just... Pure chemicals, man. I mean, I mean, I'll admit, Red Bull, sugar-free Red Bull definitely has like a chemical taste, too, but there is no other drink that I love more than sugar-free Red Bull. So gross. Yeah. Okay. We kind of started talking about different things, including last week's episode with the Kisaragi Station and, mm-hmm. and other dimensions, and we started getting into a bunch of different things here. But it's actually perfect, because today I wanted to do something a little different than we typically do, and that's kind of dive into our um, well, our mailbox, if you will, oh, and man. go through some of these listener-submitted stories that we've got. Mm-hmm. The, the week started off for us... It, it was almost like the universe was telling us to do this episode because mm-hmm. we got multiple stories from listeners like all around the same day. So either they're uh, creating you know separate email accounts and just flooding our inbox, or <laughs> people have got some really cool things to, to talk about here. And well, all of them are just so intriguing that we thought we would share them with you mm-hmm. and you know dive in. Hey man, synchronicity abounds. It does. And here's what's fun: I actually pulled them from our email. And once again, I'm going to surprise Tyler with him. This is the first time he's 
listening to them mm-hmm. for the most part. And um, well, first, let me say this. Anybody and everybody that sends us their stories and stuff, thank you so much. Sometimes it takes us a little bit to kind of get them onto the show, mainly because, well, we just want to make sure that we kind of collect a few that either have some connective tissue with something that we've recently talked about or with just the stories themselves. I got to be honest, though, this week, besides a little bit of connective tissue from last week's uh, episode, this one is just kind of a bunch of different stories with a bunch of different topics. And I got to say, I love that, man. Yeah, dude, me too, man. So first, let's give a shout out to our listener, Joe, who is out in Pennsylvania. Hey, Joe. And uh, I'm just going to read the the first couple messages he sent us and, and uh, we'll go in. I'm actually really surprised you didn't throw in a Hey Joe Hendrix dad joke there. Yeah. Well, I was waiting I, on it. You know, that was like an alley oop. I, th- I tossed it to you and you, you just. Yeah, no, it. I kind of, uh, there was another dad joke that I missed out on a couple <laughs> weeks ago that somebody sent us, uh, our buddy Christian sent us. But anyway, okay. This is, uh, this is the letter that, uh, that Joe sent us. Mm-hmm. Letter. This is the email that Joe sent us. Hi, guys. Love the show. I'm from a small town outside of Pittsburgh, and I'm pretty sure John Teeter is back. Oh, man. For at least the last three weeks, there's been an old Chevy Blazer, like the one from the 80s, off to the side of the road, facing the wrong direction. The truck is in bad shape, and I don't think there's a license plate on it. There aren't any flags or anything that would indicate that the truck is broken down and it hasn't been towed. I know that John travels in inconspicuous vehicles, and this one just seemed very odd to me. I live in a small town, and the police would definitely have towed this thing by now. Hmm. I took a picture and would like to share it with you guys. Other than that, again, really enjoy the show. My son and I try to listen every week. Now, it doesn't stop there, but I'm going to kind of break in here real quick. We've got the picture. Both mm-hmm. Tyler, Tyler and I have, have looked at it, and we're going to put it up on our Instagram page, and that's going to be where you can kind of take a look at this thing with us uh, as you're listening to this to this episode. Well, I wrote Joe back, obviously, to thank him for sending us that initial email, and I had other questions for him, and so this is his response. He says, so I've been a John Teeter fan since early 2000. I'm fascinated yep. by time travel and his story about coming back in time to retrieve the old IBM computer is plausible. I know there are some gray areas with the story, but after all is said and done, I still think if only 10% of the story is true, it's a huge deal. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Joe, I'm right there with you, man. 100% agree, yep. That said, I found your show on Spotify as I was looking for some teeter podcasts or other discussion material to see if there would be any updates on the case. When the search list popped up, the cover picture for the teeter podcast from your show caught my eye, and lo and behold, I see that that would be rad podcast title. It was a done deal. Mm-hmm. Side note, I was wearing my rad t-shirt from the 80s movie on the day in question. See? Synchronicity abounds. Yeah, Amazing, right? Mm-hmm. He says, I remember this because my son was in the car and I pointed it out as like a, hey, check it out moment. Here are my thoughts on Teeter. My thoughts for Teeter being in my area now could be a few things. Number one, I'm not too far away from the East Palestine train derailment. Mm. Number two, I'm very close to the Pittsburgh International Airport. Number three, I'm also very close to the 9-11th Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. And then four, he's not too far away from two major nuclear power plants. He says, I can only speculate as to why anyone from the future would want to visit this time and place, but I guess we'll see. Mm. So Joe, again, man, thank you so much for sending us that. And I think as a listener and Mm -hmm. to any, I guess, long-time listeners, it's relatively ob- time travel is my absolute favorite yeah concept mm-hmm. to think about ever since i saw back to the future as a kid terminator 2 terminator 2 you I mean, know one, but bill and ted i mean yeah. there's just so many of these movies that as a kid you're growing up and you're like man it would be so cool mm-hmm. and my th- my thoughts and, and everything it occupied my my uh my mind quite often mm-hmm. when we heard and when we did the episode about John Teeter. Learn more by listening to That Would Be Rad, Season 1, Episode 29, the John Teeter Time Traveler episode. I became even more fascinated. And like you, we're constantly sort of looking to see if there's any 
John Teeter sightings or mm -hmm. things popping up online. Tyler, you said you weren't able to find anything, right? No, I, not really. I mean, I, I even like on Reddit and stuff, I, I couldn't really find anything. I mean, obviously I've talked about like the dead internet theory. And so I think it actually does possibly apply, especially to a topic like this where, you know, I think a lot of those old places that you would find stuff like this, those like sort of hmm. obscure like... Two chain. Yeah, two chain and four chain, eight chain even. But those places like those, those sort of obscure like paranormal like blogs and like those weird forum posts, you know, about like fringe topics. Mm-hmm. It's just really difficult to find any of that stuff anymore. Yeah. And uh, I, I didn't, I didn't go to YouTube, which is, I guess, where some of that stuff has sort of possibly migrated to, mm -hmm. just because I didn't, I didn't have time to like go through whole videos and stuff. But no, I, I didn't really come across anything new. You know, the only thing that I could find and that kind of popped into my mind was, you know, not too long ago. So, well, God, I think let me get to this guy's page. Yeah, around this time last year, it uh, looks like the first post was like April of 2022, this Instagram account started to follow us, but that was when their first post was. Oh, I know and, exactly uh, what you're talking the about. The Instagram account's <laughs> first John Teeter. Yeah. Okay, that's what it is spelled yep. out. And the first post is, it says, I've tried getting back to 2036 so many times now. Failed attempt after failed attempt, currently trapped in 2022, Less resources than I thought they'd ha have at this point. This will be a long 14 years for them and me too if I can't make another flight. JT, if you're reading this, it's under the bench at the fort. And that's it. God, and then there's I love like, that. Then there's other posts. <laughs> the next one was like the next day and it says, Tempest Edax Rerum. And it says, unless I continue to be successful, it isn't looking good, however. Mm -hmm. The events are still happening only later than they did in my pre-flight origin. Perhaps they are inevitable to occur. Dominating the endless array of choices and outcomes. We mustn't give up, John. We can still save her. Yeah. And so there's, there's only like, it looks like there's only nine posts. The most recent was February 18th. And, and it says, I've been, and there's like, it's like most of the posts are kind of like, I don't, it's very strange, man, but this one's like, almost like some kind of cellular structure or something, I don't know. Mm. It says, I've been communicating online with others who are interested in time travel. The most recent trip only brought me eight months further in time, but it's certainly a different timeline than my original. It's also different from the one I just came from, yet somehow this electronic record remained close to the same. I noticed, however, the signature of previous notes have altered. Did you notice? And so he's got like a hashtag on here that says, hashtag time travel underscore zero. And the other ones, hold on, what does that say? Time travel underscore two. And then there's a time travel underscore one. So, so it's like multiple like, maybe? Man, I don't know. God, I love it. I mean, it could, so d d disclaimer, this could totally be a troll, somebody who's like really into John Teeter like us. But I still like to keep that small possibility alive. Like, I mean, it's interesting. Dude. This, this so person cool. follows our podcast, which is, well, I mean, that's flattering the, as heck if it's really John Teeter. Yeah. Um, but also like a bunch of, it's just straight science stuff. Annual reviews, Springer Nature Group, National Geographic, Microscopy Society, mm -hmm. The Scientist Magazine, MIT Bi Biology. That's awesome. The Internet Archive. I mean, just like CERN. I mean, there's your time MIT travel. Science, Space for Humanity. Scientific American Council for Foreign Relations. I mean, just... I mean, you might as well throw in Trilateral Commission, Bilderberg Group. <laughs> Build-a-bear. <laughs> you always say that, but it's actually a pretty like nefarious thing. Also, do you know what Tempus Edax uh, I forget. rerun means? Remind us. Uh, well, sh I think it's... Uh -huh. uh, it, it's something happens when you get cocky. <laughs> it's something like time uh, the devourer of all things or time devours all things yeah time that devours all things yeah 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 that's right Warrior. yeah I, I think that's so cool man man i mean it's pretty fatalistic but yeah, yeah, it's yeah. still cool so i mean that's the only thing that i could find and again like you said it could just be somebody that's a huge fan of john teeter mm -hmm. but again flattering that either that fan of john teeter follows mm -hmm. our or you know follows our podcast or if it is john teeter yeah, I have a thought. Okay. And this is something that like 
I mean, I feel like we we find a way to like to like sneak this into every episode. I'm pretty sure we even talked about it last episode, but I love the idea of like, what if because this guy is like sort of like sort of speaking it into the world. He's making like you know sort of like chronological points of like saying cert- these certain things as if they're like real. What if that is actually sort of through like retro causality, what if that is actually informing the like the original John Teeter and that's that's how it all came to pass. It's like a loop. Whoa. I just I love that kind of stuff, man. man so that cool. Is wild. Yeah. Um the only I, other th- I, okay. Okay. <laughs> no no no, real quick. Uh I do have a theory that like a lot of this and I actually had a dream about this hmm. that I told you about a long time ago where it was this idea where these beings, and what's funny is like since then, I mean, this was probably two, maybe two years ago, I kind of had this dream. And I remember waking up being like, I just figured it all out. You know, it was like one of those yeah. sort of very enlightening things. But it was this idea that basically like these entities or beings or or aliens or like us from the future or whatever, like the way they're able to sort of be brought into this you know, dimension or our reality is actually through like inspiring certain people to come mm-hmm. up with things. Mm-hmm. And then and then those people go on to create the technology, which yeah. it's like a long game, but then that's how they're they're like brought into our world. And what's interesting is like since then, you know, we've we've gotten sort of delved even or leaned even further into this idea of like, you know, the idea that like whether it's demons or like these sort of entities or whatever are now able to use like the internet and like AI generated art and stuff like mm-hmm. that to like they're using that as like a me- another sort of form of like a medium like a a Ouija board or mm. all that stuff. And so like I think all that stuff could have some sort of like tie in together, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting, man, and we've talked about this before just even in like in terms of songwriting ourselves, mm-hmm. like it, there's this thing that happens that you can't explain mm-hmm. when, yeah. you know, some songs you'll, it comes pretty, or parts of it will come pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. And then you just have to like work on it and work out that song. And then there's other songs that just come out and it's literally like you can't, it's like you've tapped in right. to something. Yeah. And everything even included like lyrics. Mm-hmm. Like there were times when Tyler and I would like get together to write some songs and, all of a sudden, I'm literally just like singing a melody and words, and right. it's just like you can't explain that stuff. And it sounds kind of hokey, potentially. But if you're listening to the show, <laughs> then you're in the right place for hokey. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, well, well. No, you, I mean, you know, Keith Richards, which is a, a huge idol for both of us. He's mentioned before that, like, you know, we're like nothing more than like little antennas, mm-hmm. you know, and. You know, if you believe, I know uh, one of our listeners mentioned a long time ago that we should cover uh, this thing called like the Akashic Record, which is this idea that, you know, uh, imagine sort of there's like this, I don't know if it would be considered like another like dimension or whatever, but it's like there's this sort of all knowing library of all things, you know, that, that lives somewhere up in the cloud or whatever. And we're able to like tap into that stuff through like, you know, whether it be like ayahuasca or lucid dreaming or or whatever. And I, I truly think that 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 also plays into like us as songwriters. I think it plays into like, you know, all sort of artists. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're just, maybe they, we are just a little more like sensitive. So our, like our antennas are picking up more. Yeah. So, yeah, that's I think interesting, that's cool. man. It's almost like <clears throat> the more you practice, let's say, an instrument or something, mm-hmm. let's say you pick up the tuba. And you just practice your buns off. And next thing you know, that's part of the reason why Joshua Cutchin is just getting these right. these right. messages of, of right. wisdom, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah actually, you never know when the, where, where the uh, inspiration is going to come from. And it's uh, that's what I love about just being creative in general. But just like I try to instill in my, in my kids, and I'm sure you're the same, it's just like that using your imagination or just being creative for whatever it is that you're doing mm-hmm. is so important because I, I feel like oh yeah you're kind of beginning to be able to tap into that whatever it is that helps you be more creative you know mm-hmm. yeah absolutely 
the only other thing I was going to say about time travel, and we've talked about this together, you and I, is I'm always fascinated by like, well, have there been any sort of like sightings of modern day time travel Mm -hmm. or time travelers, you know? And I think one of the things that we're going to cover on a future show or potentially like on the Patreon is... (laughs) (laughs) I love it, yeah. Because we didn't really talk about the truck. Something that stood out to me about this truck is, you know, look, we've all driven kind of down, especially us where we live, rural rural roads. That's a rural, (laughs) jur. Um... Take a drink. Country roads where there's like an abandoned vehicle. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's like this in, in Pennsylvania, but it's certainly like this here where if a car is on the side of the road for longer than a day, officers have oh yeah kind of come and checked it out and stuff, and they'll slap a sticker that's darn near impossible to remove from your window mm-hmm. that just shows other officers that it's been inspected and, you know, whatever. But it's also giving the the owner of the vehicle a chance to, you know, come and get it or get it towed. Otherwise, it's going to be towed kind of situation. Right, right. And, you know, Joe mentioned that there, there was no license plate on this vehicle. There's no stickers or anything that that, that uh, indicate that the police have, have uh, inspected it or, or is, are going to tow it. And it's been there for several weeks. And that's interesting, man. Yeah, that's really interesting. I, I remember, I feel like when we were kids, that's something that you would see so much more like frequently, you know, like just cars on the side of the road. I mean, maybe yeah. they ran out of gas or or whatever. But like now, you're exactly right. Like now it's like, you know, if you see it like two days in a row, you know that like, oh, well, it's, it's going to be towed yeah. like pretty pretty, you know, quickly. Yeah, 100%. And I will say, I mean, I mean, this this truck looks like super sort of like, I mean, it, it does look like something that like a John Teeter would drive. Yeah, especially since it's like an old beat up 80s, mile, uh, 80s model Chevy mm-hmm. truck. With a back like camper shell. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That is, it's one of those things like we talked about when we talked about John Teeter in that episode, like, purposely picking out a vehicle that is not necessarily evergreen, but that can fit in a lot of times. And so like seeing one of these to someone that's not familiar, for example, of the John Teeter story mm-hmm. wouldn't be a big deal. It's, like, oh, it's just some old Chevy truck that's right, on the right, side right. of the road. Yeah. So it is and it kind could of, be. Maybe it is. Yeah. And it's like, you know, thieves aren't necessarily going to be tar- targeting this vehicle and be like, oh man, I bet there's some nice equipment in the back there that we yeah use. right yeah it's it's all beat up and you know and from the picture it looks like that back camper top has got tinted windows which is also interesting well i think to me the most interesting part is it if this is you know let's let's like suspend our disbelief here if the, if this is john teeter you know his oh, and i can't think of what it's, it's also called. pointed the wrong way that's a detail I forgot. To well, yes, emphasize, right? there's that. But if you look close, it looks like there's something in the back that is weighing the back half down. Oh, yeah, you're right, man. And I remember he'd mentioned that, he I did. believe, in one of those things. It was like heavy and weighing it down. Yep. Hmm. I mean, did we find John Teeter? Joe, did you find him? I think him? Joe found him. Wow. I mean, what would be crazy is, and Joe, as you're listening to this, you got to reach out and let us know. Is it still there? Well, no, no, no. I, I'm going to go one step further, Joe. Okay. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need you to sneak over there. I need you to break into that thing, in Joe. In the dead of night with your flashlight. Doesn't have to be night. Uh, well, day. Well, there's not that many cops around, obviously. So well, let's, yeah. Let's have some daylight. Let's have a little friendly daylight to kind of. I mean, just imagine this, would you? Imagine okay. uh, uh, Imagine that, that you're Joe, right? I'm going to need you to set the scene properly, man. Okay, I'm Joe. I'm, okay, you're Joe. Yeah, you're you're riding with your son. You're listening to that would be rad, and you're just like, man, this, man, is, this like, is the best podcast. What a day! Ever. And just you know, haphazardly, sort yeah. of a, as an off comment, you're like, oh man, that looks like that looks like a vehicle John Teeter would have. Uh, the son pipes in, "Who's John Teeter, Dad?" Uh, you go into it, yada yada yada. Then a couple weeks go by. You're driving down the same stretch of road. Your son says, "Hey, Dad, look, it's John Teeter's truck." You go, "Oh, that is weird." Then you listen to this podcast, and by the sort of urging of Woody and Tyler, mm-hmm. you decide, you know what? I'm going to sneak over there and look into the back, look into that camper shell, 
Yeah, during the daytime when it's safe to go. <laughs> or nighttime, whatever you, whatever you prefer, Joe. And you look in and like just imagine like there's this machine with all these like blinking lights. Oh my god. That gosh, would be so yeah. rad, man. Man alive. Yeah. Whew. Super cool, dude. Thank you so much, Joe, for sending that in. Now, it sounds like you think we're done with Joe here. But, oh, that's uh, right. Here's the good news. When we get back from the break, Joe also sent us another story. And when we get back, we're going to talk about his supernatural experience. Oh, man, I'm psyched. After these messages, we'll be right back. On June 14th, your favorite emotions are back on the big screen in Disney and Pixar's Inside Out 2. It's time to greet your Team Riley. It's anger. Let me at him. Fear. Safety checklist is complete. Disgust. Ew, ew. Ugh. Sadness is in the house. Oh, no. Hello, I'm anxiety. I'm one of Riley's new emotions. Disney and Pixar's Inside Out 2. There's a part two? We're going. Ready PG. Parental guidance suggested. Only in theaters June 14th. Get tickets now. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promote for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month. Slows. Full terms at mintmobile.com. Your brain needs support. And new Ollie Brainy Chews are a delightful way to take care of your cognitive health. Made with scientifically backed ingredients like Thai ginger, L-theanine, and caffeine. Brainy Chews support healthy brain function and help you find your focus. Stay chill or get energized. Be kind to your mind and get these nootropic chews at ollie.com. That's O-L-L-Y dot com. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. There's something out there waiting for us. Hey, this is Bryce Johnson from the Bigfoot Collectors Club, and you're listening to Tyler and Woody on That Would Be Rad, because that is rad. All right, so Joe kind of continues in a second email. We kind of wrote back and forth, and, you know, folks, look, whenever you send an email to us, we, we absolutely love it. And, and part of the reason is, we want to get to know each and every one of you. I know that sounds crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, you're all over the world and there's a lot of you. But if we could, believe me whenever I say, we would love to get to know you and your stories and everything. And so I like to start these conversations. And I asked him, you know, um, if he had any other strange experiences or anything like that that we could share. Mm-hmm. And so this is what he wrote back. Per your question about any personal experiences with the supernatural, I've seen and been physically touched by an apparition. Mm. First off, I live in an old house built in 1882. And to give you some perspective, it's a big place that kind of has this circular flow, meaning when you walk in the front door, which is in the middle of the house, in front, you can either go left or right to enter one of two living rooms. So rich. (laughs) This is important to the story. So Mm -hmm. basically, you can walk in the front door and make a left into a living room, make a right into the kitchen, make another right into the dining room, and then another right into the second living room. And then once you make another right, you're back at the front door. So on this particular evening, I was the only one home. I'm married and I have six children. And at the time, congratulations, Joe. Mm -hmm. At the time, my family was in Yellowstone National Park on a vacation. Cool. Disclaimer, he says, I was not intoxicated or on any drugs. So that night, I was laying on the couch in the front living room. And with my family being gone, I didn't really care if I fell asleep there because I was the only one home. Mm -hmm. 
So I turned off the TV and just decided to crash on the couch. About 15 to 20 minutes of laying there in moderate darkness, I began to hear the sounds of someone walking in the dining room, which would be directly behind me. Very slow steps, but still enough for me to be doubtful. The steps began to get closer to my position. The dining room is transitioned to the living room by a pocket door that was open, and the floor goes from, uh, he says LVT, so I'm going to assume that's vinyl tiling, I guess, or Mm. linoleum flooring, I think, onto real old finished oak floor plank. My fear level rose a bit as I heard these steps cross over to the creaky old oak floor. I closed my eyes, and from my perspective, everything was happening to my left as I'm laying on the couch. Suddenly, the noise stopped, and with my eyes still closed, I slowly peeked out of my left eye to see a being floating three feet away from my position, and it was approximately two feet off the ground. Wow. It was not looking at me. It was looking straight ahead. So I was able to make out a profile of a face, but nothing recognizable. Within those three seconds, I closed my eyes again and did the whole, holy sh**, I am hallucinating thing in my Mm. head. And then opened my eyes again, and it was still there, staring straight forward, three feet away from me. Now at this point, I'm terrified. Keep in mind, this was only about a 20-second ordeal from the time I saw it to the time it disappeared. So as I'm staring at this thing, I can only compare it to the apparition you see. And this was just real quick to break out. This is probably my favorite part of the email, and it made me laugh out loud. I can only compare it to the apparition you see in the movie Ghostbusters when Ray has the dream, you know? Mm -hmm. It did not have any arms or legs. It was just a wisp, but with a semblance of a human face. It slowly turned toward me and I closed my eyes and braced myself. And as soon as I did that, I felt the most gentle hand go through my hair like it was moving it away from my eye. And then right after that, I felt it grab my side, almost as if it was trying to tickle me. I immediately jumped out of my position and screamed. And it was gone. I've told that story to everyone and no one believes me, but I will never forget it as long as I live. I have that image burned into my mind of that thing, and I remember it touching my head and squeezing my side like it was yesterday. We're still in the house, and I haven't seen anything or heard any footsteps, but from time to time, I will feel this Arctic-like cold draft come out of nowhere when I'm in bed. Yeah. I don't believe the entity was evil. I got the feeling it was female, and two years before that happened, I lost my mother very suddenly. I'm not sure if it was her, but again, I don't think it meant me any harm. Now back to the teeter truck. Let me know what you think. <laughs> Might just be a hunk of junk on the side of the road, but if John was going to travel, this would be the truck to do it in. Agreed. Man. Man, that's awesome. Let's okay, so help me help clarify a couple things. Okay. So Joe lives in a house with four living rooms. <laughs> uh, no, so on Joe's estate, yeah, on Joe's manor. So he he saw this thing that just looked sort of like a face. No, no, no. So like floating? basically, kind of, you know. Um, well, I mean, he described it perfectly because that's almost immediately what I think of any time I read anything where someone's having a ghost like experience at this level. And in Ghostbusters, when Ray's like in the firehouse and he's mm-hmm. sleeping there's that ghost that's like floating above him mm-hmm. and it's not like a scary looking one it's not the one at the library basically but anyhow it, it was just like imagine just like sort of a floating person but he is sort of from his perspective as he's laying there on the couch it's kind of three feet away from him and it's just a side profile of this apparition a floating profile. in the air yeah so that he can see the side profile of its face so it's looking straight forward. You know what I'm saying? Like he's looking at it. But so he's laying on, so I'm picturing this. I'm picturing he's laying on the couch on his side. No, no, no. He's, he's on, on his the couch back. on his back. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That yeah. makes a little more sense. And so yeah. it's just floating above him. 
Uh, yeah. Like the ghost. Basically. Person. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, that's what I picture. He didn't uh, had different say memories. specifically if he was laying on his back, but just the way that he described it, that's kind of how I picture it. He's laying on his back. Mm-hmm. In front of him, he kind of sees three feet away that there's this like apparition floating, looking straight forward. Mm-hmm. The, the apparition's looking forward, but, you know, away from him. They're perpendicular to one another. Right, right. Um, Come on, History Award. The, the, the tickling part Oof. is interesting. It is, man, because, you know, a lot of times, including my own potentially paranormal experience. I was going to bring it up. Hear Woody's own personal paranormal experience on That Would Be Rad, Season 1, Episode 10, The Halloween Spectacular. You know, a lot of times people say, if you challenge a spirit or something, mm-hmm. an entity, to you know, shake your hand or something like that, they mm-hmm. won't do it because they don't have the ability to you know, physically make a thing. Now, right. that being said, there have been like a couple times that I've heard of where people feel, typically it's more of like, and that's what's interesting about this one, it's more of like, a, it's almost like a comforting technique. Mm-hmm. One thing that I haven't asked Joe yet, but a detail that stood out to me was that it kind of like moved his hair. It's something that like a parent would do, you know? Right. Like I, my son's hair is getting a little too long. Sure. I'll kind of like brush it over if it's in his eyes, you know? He looks just like Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> and so like I have heard of people feeling like a, almost like a comfort when they've had an experience where like, let's say it's a parent visiting them or something like their hand on uh, uh, their shoulder or something, they could feel like a weight, you know, but I've never right. heard of anybody sort of being poked or prodded, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I definitely have experienced the, like the cold spot kind of thing. Mm. And the, actually, I think this was in our first Halloween episode. You know, I told my story about, which this is what I thought it was going in that direction of like my own story where, you know, this I had an encounter with like a quote unquote, like shadow person came out of the closet, sort of walked across the room and then just stood there. And in that same house, I do remember, you know, and it was one of those things too, where like in retrospect, that wasn't as popular of a, or not popular, but that wasn't as like widely known as like a, a um, an experience that people would have, you know, with mm-hmm. like the, I get, and I guess the reason that they, they, the reason for these like, sub, like cold spot situations is because it's like they're drawing all like the available energy out of the room, which would also like include like heat, you know? Yeah. So I think that's sort of the, the reason for like the cold spots. But in that same house, I used to have the same thing. And I really thought it was going to be like a negative thing. So I, th- I think like having like an almost comforting encounter is, mm-hmm. is like probably more rare. And I mean, I think it's really cool, especially, you know, I mean, sorry for your loss. Yeah, man. Joe, that sucks about your mom. But I think, you know, I, I, I know less about what, or I guess what I'm trying to say is like, I, I, I feel that sort of what I think about Ghost is, God, how am I trying to say this? Uh, like, I, I feel like I know less about what I think about Ghost could possibly be now than I did mm you know as like a kid or something years ago you know because i feel like there's so many like possible options and and um, i think we kind of talked about those in that episode learn more by listening to that would be rad season two episode 34 what are ghosts yeah right a bunch of different theories about that yes Mm -hmm. but i you know I, i believe that uh i don't know i think that uh that could be i mean maybe that was your mom i think that's a really sweet sort of Mm thought yeah you know? and i mean like for me you know and i think i may have mentioned this in that episode and stuff but like it is one of those things where it's a little bit uh well yeah it's comforting man to think that mm-hmm. even potentially and there's a lot of cultures that like really emphasize this i think within their uh, belief systems yeah right but like that that potential opportunity to actually come and and visit uh your family Mm-hmm. after you're gone or or people that you love and care about like i don't know it's very very comforting to me in terms of just like my overall thought you yeah. know about yeah. death and, and that kind of thing because like i can tell you i'm gonna do it it's, it's like oh you're breaking the rules i'm gonna be like in um what's that movie coco 
Yeah, Coco. Encanto. Like, there's that one character that's always trying to just, like, break the rules and get to the, you know, oh, yeah, party right. kind of thing from the afterlife. That would be me, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't matter. I'm going to try every time. But yeah. anyhow, not to get too deep, not to get too heavy. Again, Joe, man, holy smokes, uh, nice to meet you. And yeah. love those stories. I'm very interested to hear if the truck is still there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, um, yeah, tell us what if you find that uh, John Tudor Instagram listeners. Yeah, tell us what you think about that. It's interesting. Yeah, and also, I don't think you ever said like how old your son was, but I think it's pretty cool that, that like you both can listen to our show. And I would actually be a little curious as to you know some of these sort of more abstract sort of concepts that we do kind of you know delve into mm-hmm. sometimes with like like tulpas and egregores and all these sort of, you know, these things that sort of exist like outside of of just like regular cryptids and all that stuff. But yeah, I think that's really cool, man. Mm-hmm. We will return after these messages. America's future can be determined by our dreams and our visions. It was very intense broad For over 200 years, there have been reports of giant man-like creatures from another dimension, another world, I don't know. The most intriguing mystery on the North American continent. This is Joshua Cutchen, and you're at my home for weirdness. That would be rad. All right, so we've got two more amazing listener stories. Wow. Okay. Hit me. Give it to me. (laughs) First, this one's from Hunter out in Colorado. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he says, hi, recently got into your guys' podcast and absolutely love them. I host my own podcast and figured I'd share my stories with you here. I have experiences with everything from Bigfoot to aliens. I'm not sure what the character limit is here, so I'll start with the alien one. It was about 10 years ago. Me and my family went on vacation to North and South Dakota. Mm. We'd been driving on the interstate for a while, and at this point, we're in the middle of the desert. We were all awake except for one. We were driving, and on the right side, we passed a baseball field. Lights on, cars, no people. No sound, nothing. Mind you, we were in the middle of nowhere. Then we hit a dead end on the interstate. We obviously were all very curious because why is there a dead end on the interstate? Mm -hmm. And why is there a baseball field, you know? So we turn around, go back down the road because we were very confused. And as we continued, we tried to figure out where we were. And on the way back of this dead end, the baseball field was gone. Mm. It was nowhere to be found. But on the other side of the road was a bar. Same situation. Lights on, cars, but no people. It was a crazy experience, and we don't have any explanation for it. That being said, we think it was aliens. (laughs) If you want to hear some of my other stories, (laughs) I love it. If you want to hear some of my other stories, please get back to me. I'd love to share all my experiences and firsthand accounts on these crazy phenomena. So first... Hunter, send them all in. We want to hear every one of them. (laughs) We want to hear them all. And I love... um, Well, I'll get to that in just a second. Also, folks, if you're interested in listening to Hunter's podcast, it's called Grandy Shores. And it's uh, that's spelled Mm G-R-A-N-D-Y. And then Shores uh, podcast. You can... I think you can check it out on Spotify or wherever you get your podcast. Looks like there's a couple there are a couple episodes in, and uh, it looks like they talk about a bunch of random stuff, like uh, well, much like ourselves, but mostly you know video games and and that kind of stuff. So big shout out to Grandy Shores and and thank you so much, Hunter, for uh, for sending this over. But right on. I love that it's just like we didn't know what it was. <laughs> we thought it was aliens. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty good. It, it reminds me. Of- oh man, I hope you say it. It reminds me of something that we've experienced at the same time. Oh wait, you go, you go first. What are you talking about? Well, now I, I want to hear what you go. So no, you my, can't say like, oh yeah, I was thinking that too, and just completely be. No, it. no, no. Mine's from like another, uh, like another person's okay, account. Okay, good, dude. The second, so I wrote him back and I explained the situation that you and I experienced, and I had totally forgotten about this, but this story 
sort of slapped me in the face because it was like, oh my God, I f- completely forgot about this. And hopefully I didn't just dream it or something. Okay, do you remember we were on tour? Mm-hmm. It was late at night mm-hmm. and either we were going to or coming or leaving Washington, D.C. Okay. Man, I can't believe this isn't ringing any bells already. I mean, okay. Yeah. We're driving around, and the interstates there were kind of like weird and stuff, and it was still early sort of. um, At this point, we did have like a GPS. Either we would rent them. Do you remember that? I do remember We'd like rent the GPS device. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So lame. Uh, Or eventually, I think we just invested in one or whatever. Yeah. Still didn't have, you know, good sort of, they didn't, you didn't have that on your cell phones. I think I had like a BlackBerry at that point. Real cool. Yeah, very. Anyhow. We're driving through D.C. It's late at night. We is this were, before or after the Ethiopian restaurant? I don't remember. <laughs> I, I'm thinking like either far enough after or or before. I, I don't feel like we were in a super hurry uh, to get to a show or anything. I feel like it was like, I don't know, is the short answer. I, I'm not sure. I just remember it was dark. We're okay. trying to drive around D.C. and yeah. find wherever it is that we're going. And we're on a freaking interstate and okay. then all of a sudden, it's a dead end. And we're like, what? And it's like they, the interstate would have kept going forward, but there's like a bridge overpass sort of above us. We didn't see any traffic there. It was like slowly we were driving down this road, and it I, seems in my memory, less and less cars, and all of a sudden we're the only one on the road. And I then do know this, what you're talking about. This dead end, it was like the the under yeah, underneath but, this bridge was like bricked over where we couldn't, and we're like, what the? Yes, but it was weird because I do remember... The, the the GPS was showing that like it should have just kept going. Yeah, exactly. I totally had forgotten. And I remember about like that. You, there was like a there was like a concrete wall separating mm-hmm. like the other side. And so in, in other words, like, and we didn't see any signs that said, "Hey, mm-hmm. don't go this way. You're going to fall off the face of the earth or be right. transport. You're going to be spirited away." Yeah. So we had to like we made a U turn in the oncoming direction. Yeah. Of course, again, no cars. Yeah. We just sort of drove to the what we figured would be the closest, like, oh, okay, I guess this is an exit. Mm-hmm. Got off, and then, whoop, normal world, everywhere else. Yeah, I totally remember that. You remember and this? I, I, yes, and I remember that you were driving at, like, you know, pretty pretty decent speed because mm-hmm. it was like an interstate. And yeah. then I remember you being like, what the f*** is Hold this? on. And it was like, sl- you were slowed down, and it was like, as we got to it, we just stopped, and we were like, what the f- going on yeah yeah dude that's awesome so anyways that's what i thought of and it was such a weird experience and i mm-hmm. haven't thought of that dude i haven't thought since, of that dude and i mean me there's either. certain things that i will think about once well at least once a week but m- sometimes even multiple times a day and one of them is <laughs> coincidentally enough some synchronicity here in dc we played this venue that was essentially oh god not a venue but like an ethiopian restaurant that had indie rock night and the, fu- the funniest, one dude, of the funniest, funniest things. things ever, only because poor <laughs> Boo Boo, our bass player, yeah, Chris, his nickname was Boo Boo. His real name is Chris Martin, which is <laughs> yeah. even more irony. You'll recognize him from Coldplay. And <laughs> yeah, right. We're playing this this uh, this show, and it was a it was actually a to be honest show. with you. Aside from that, it was one of the best shows in my memory because we had friends and and yeah. and um, lovers people that followed us or it came from Georgia. So like really close friends and uh, folks that would come to all our shows and stuff. And they came to DC. So it was like, we got to have this shared yeah. experience with like really, really close friends and stuff. And it was just amazing. Well, um, it was amazing for us, but for Boo Boo. Yeah, but for poor Boo Boo, you know, it was this tight space. The poor Ethiopian restaurant, I hadn't really thought it through, so to speak. Also, they side got note. the sound system. Yeah. There's no stage. So we're just like on the floor in a restaurant yeah. <laughs> and and Chris had to be next to the where door. he was standing he was next to like the, the, the entrance into this restaurant which was like this glass door that just like opened instead of out it opened in toward him and so every time every time somebody would come into the restaurant it would just literally just <laughs> <laughs> bump his elbow or just like bump him in the back. And like <laughs> Boo Boo or Chris is literally like the nicest yeah. human being on planet Earth. He like is. it I've only seen him mad a handful of times. I'm 
Sad to say, probably a couple of them were my fault. Oh, definitely. <laughs> well, he's gotten mad at you a lot more. Yeah, but him and I had like a Just connection. Easy. Okay, well, from whatever. From like a long time ago. So like, okay, <laughs> we got it. All right. What I'm saying is, he's so nice and he's so like polite and like sweet. Yeah. That like he gets along he, with like he would, everyone. Like, he would smile at the person and be like, "Oh, no problem." While he's playing a song, like this is happening while we're playing. Yeah. And he would just be like, oh, and then he would like look at us and be like, come on. He was so <laughs> furious, man. And me and Tyler are just like laughing our butts off because we know how hard it must be to just get slammed in the elbow. Anyways, I think about that moment. Oh, hold on real quick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drive a little bit away from the dock. The curtain. <laughs> the curtain. Dude, this is the same guy. He, he Again, nicest dude in the world. Always smiling. He's the kind of guy that you could literally... He doesn't Place complain, him. dude. Never heard him complain, I don't think, ever. Well, I mean, no, he would complain. never complained. Some stuff. He, he, he was the guy that, like, his big gulp diet Fanta spilled in our completely fully carpeted van. <sighs> <laughs> and, I mean, we're still a little upset about that, boo-boo. Uh, but, no, this is the guy that, like, just things would just consistently, like, happen to them and, like, he handled him so well because he's, like, such a funny, like, jovial kind of dude. But, like, this is also the guy that, like, you tell it. Tell the tell the curtain story. Well, I don't remember what show it was, but it was, like, one of our, you know, when we would go on tour, the way we would kind of do it is we would, like, what we, we would design it in a way that the tour schedule was what we call a sandwich. Mm-hmm. So we would start the tour, we would kick it off with, like, a hometown show in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And that would kind of like, you know, boost your spirits with the hometown crowd. Well, we like the out-of-town crowds better. But anyway, yeah. so we played that show. And then we would do, at the end of the tour, a show back in the hometown. And typically, you know, obviously you don't want to play like, hey, we're playing, you know, this month in Atlanta, and then we'll be back next month. The reason you don't want to do that is because, well, some people, yeah. might, you know, you're trying to maximize attendance here. So it would, mm-hmm. it would be like a three-month stretch, right? And so we're... But because people would be like, oh, well... You know, I can I can go to this show, or they're coming back next month. So I'll just yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want to space it out, mm-hmm. and anyhow, we uh, we do this tour. We were finally back at the hometown show, and it's at Smith's Old Bar. It's mm-hmm. pretty, you know. Um, I hate I hate I hate it. I hate playing there too, but it's historic. In it is historic, but it does suck. If you're in a band, it, whoever you go to see there, mm-hmm. like be enthusiastic for them because we know how they feel when they're up on that stage and having yeah. All having to do with Smith. It never sucks. sounded good. No. Although, one of the best sound guys... On stage, at least. Yeah, yeah. Ever uh, worked there. You remember that guy? Uh, he also worked at uh, the, the venue in East Atlanta. Anyway, we're doing Oh, yeah, he, yeah, he worked at the Earl, the ball, mm-hmm. the yeah, yeah. shaved head. Yeah. Shaved head guy. That yeah, dude man. was awesome. He was awesome, man. Mm-hmm. And he knew what he was doing, and he was just... Yeah. He was a great to work with. But anyhow, so... One thing that's kind of cool about Smiths, you know, is that they have this like curtain that like envelops the entire stage. And so whenever it's, you know, if you're the headliner, you come out and they kind of backlight it and mm-hmm. people are seeing your shadows. Yeah. And, uh, well, and also it's like one of those like old school circular stages mm-hmm. or like half it's rounded. It's rounded. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it kind of comes out in like a, you know, toward the, the, the crowd. But anyhow, the curtain begins to open and, <sighs> We're just like, you know, and I don't remember like if we started playing as the curtain's opening. I think so, right? It's just like the lights go out. Everybody goes nuts. The curtain mm-hmm. starts opening. The spotlights are on us. And, you know, I was the, the front man. I was in the center. Tyler, if you're, fa- if, if, listener, if you're facing the stage, mm-hmm. Tyler was to my left. Left, yep. And then Boo was to my right. So mm-hmm. you're, you're, you know, and... The curtain gets to Boo Boo. And we just kind of like, we were hearing like things kind of sound a little weird over there. Because, you know, you're you're doing your job, right? My job is to, you know, sing the first notes of the, you know, mm-hmm. verse or whatever. And, and, and usually, too, I, I started because I was, I guess, like the l- lead guitar player. Yeah. So usually it would start with like a little riff or a little like thing. Something so, like an intro of some sort. Yeah, yeah, so we're focusing on like your job. Your job. You're looking at the set list. You're making sure everything's cool. So you're like kind of in your own world. Tyler's jiggling cables on his freaking. Oh, God. Oh, my, yeah. Anyway, 
or in our own world, we kind of notice, like, you know, because we practice so often, and I've said this on the show before, like one of our goals was, look, we, we get that everyone's taste in music is different, mm-hmm. and and that's cool, man. It's it's amazing, actually. Right. We wanted to be like the band that even if we opened up for a heavy metal band or even a, a, a rapper, yep. that whoever was in the audience might not like our songs necessarily. They will, but mm-hmm. they might not like them at first. But one thing that they could never say was that we were just sloppy and, you know, unrehearsed and stuff. So we were yep. tight and we practiced, you know, five, six days a week when mm-hmm. we were home. Yep. Anyway, so we could hear pretty quickly if something wasn't correct and, you know, it was pretty rare. So we both kind of like look over at where Boo Boo is and it's like we <laughs> we catch the tail end of him sort of like, all jumbled up and unwrap, trying to unwrap himself from this <laughs> curtain that has just completely wrapped him up, man. He's yeah. just like, huh? Like, it's like he, the curtain started to get tangled on him for mm-hmm. whatever, get caught on him for whatever reason. And instead of like going in whatever direction, would have just like set it loose, he went the other way yeah. and got wrapped up and then just couldn't figure out like what to do. <laughs> Plus, he was like trying to figure out, oh God, I got to be able to play these notes. Oh my God, dude. It is. Yeah. As the curtain is going, he's like turning like some sort of like cog in a machine, like <laughs> with the curtain as it's going back. Oh. Speaking of Smith's Old Bar, also the same place that I had a curtain situation. You remember that? Same I kind of thing. What happened? It like knocked over your mic stand. Or yeah, something? yeah, knocked over mic stand. Which as you're playing the intro to a song. Yep, exactly. As I'm playing the intro, the stupid curtains are pulling back, mm. and next thing one. you hear is like you know I'm playing like some like lick or whatever as oh. the curtains are opening and then pong God. i mean it was awful let me Not, tell you let me third time's a charm here and this is the reason why and i didn't think about this until now that we well, know what you're about to this say. is the third thing that makes smith so bar essentially cursed for us 100 percent. we played this amazing charity that was um and i think it's still going on but it's called 500 songs for kids and what they do Totally lost train of thought. Oh, you're going to talk about where you, we messed up the intro and had to start over. <laughs> <laughs> it's even better than that, dude. You're you're remembering it. <laughs> you're remembering it kindly. It's even worse than that, dude. Oh, it's so terrible. Anyway, we're playing this charity, and the the, the premise is they choose 500 songs, and then they get like artists um, to cover that song, and then that's the concert. And it's over mm-hmm. a, a span of a couple of days or whatever. Well, well, and it wasn't only at Smith's Old Bar. Like this, like stretched I th- right didn't it go no, to like I don't remember. a ton of different locations kind of a detail that doesn't matter for the story but well, I, no, appreci- I, mean, if I appreciate you adding it if there's 500 performances yeah but i think it was like yeah you're probably right mm-hmm. i am right. or it was like an all day th- i don't remember okay it's a mm-hmm. good charity but we're not contributing to it <laughs> what do you um, call like five for five five hundred five hundred songs for kids man I oh that's that. <laughs> okay i'd like for you to listen <laughs> just, just cut all that out yeah i will don't you worry. So anyway, we got a like a golden opportunity <clears throat> because one of Tyler and I's favorite bands, believe it or not, uh, is Counting Crows. Oh yeah. And I say believe it or not, not because I'm trying to throw some shade, but only because before I really dug into that band, I only thought of them as um. I don't Dude, know. They're, what they're one of my all time yeah, favorite bands because I didn't know like there's so much to their ad-lib performances and stuff and how like he's they're just genius songwriters and stuff mm-hmm. but anyhow and what was the song that we got uh was it uh oh it was i think mr it was, jones right? yeah but it was it was we decided to do yeah. like a live version of it yeah because they did it so differently and one of the versions that uh he would do was structurally so different and slow yeah. and it was really cool so yeah. we you know, again, I think we were like home from tour, but only for like a few weeks. So we just had a little bit of time to kind of get it down. And we show up, we've got it down. And it was a situation where the sound was just really bizarre. And in my monitor, I couldn't really hear what Tyler was playing. And, and the way it would go is like he would play this little lick and then I would come in timed with the chord structure that he was playing. Mm-hmm. And then everybody would kind of come in. Well, everybody couldn't hear my vocals it was like a perfect storm. Nobody knew yeah. where they were supposed to come in, essentially. Cool. And then uh, 
we, I forgot. I think we did start over, which is we did. Amazing. God, it's and then so and then on top of that, too, that's the only time I've I was ever done still that. off. Yeah, that first verse was still off, and then like I was so mad that we kind of just slugged through it. We didn't even finish the whole thing. We're like, yeah, we're out of here. Well, so Ooh, and we just walk <laughs> off the yeah. stage. So the the version that we did is like from like this live show that they played way years and years and years ago, like around the you know, August and everything after that first record. And it's super sort of weird. Like, it, mm-hmm. so it's not it's not a matter of being like, oh, we've all heard Mr. Jones yeah. a thousand times. So even if the sound was awful, we could like follow it. It was really bizarre. Like the, yeah. the guitar lick was almost like, um, I don't know, it was like, it was like a weird it sort of weird like, timing. Weird timing, weird pattern. and And it was all like, I mean, this is going to make zero sense to any of you that aren't like musicians, but it was like take all of your major sort of uh, like most of your major notes are all now in like a minor. It was mm-hmm. it was bizarre. So it and wasn't that song specifically. It is so poppy, and that's the one that people probably think about mm-hmm. when they think of Counting Crows. And they're like, Mister Jones. Yeah, right. You know, like who cares? But the yeah. way that he did this, you're right. He like transposed it a little bit made everything more minor so the key was a little bit different and the melody was a lot different mm-hmm. but also that he he is and tyler is probably too nice to to say this on here but i'll go ahead and readily admit it i'm very much in terms of my singing like a, a very like sort of on the there's not a whole lot of um outside of the box right um well. rhythmically with my my vocals i mean really i mean for the most part it's like relatively you know, it follows the beat without a whole lot of stuff. Anything on that's the pr- outside of that is when Tyler would be like, well, what if you do this instead? Mm-hmm. And sometimes, you remember this, dude, sometimes we'd be in the studio and I'd be like, dude, I just cannot, my mind cannot wrap my head around that so frustrating. rhythm, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and so, like, it would just be but you, the you stupid things that we'd get hung up on. But you were great on, like, improv stuff. But yeah, these are the songs it's still, that it's still like rhythmically very much follows like a simple pattern that goes. Right. It's not like very abstract in that way. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, what's his name? Adam. Adam Duritz. Adam Duritz. Is that really it? Yeah, Fred Durst's brother. <sighs> anyway, yes, Adam, Adam from Adam Duritz from the Ken, the lead singer of the Kenan Crows, the songwriter. Mm-hmm. He is the exact opposite, and he He's will a do all kinds of crazy things with his vocals. Yeah. Um, rhythmically and melodically but rhythmically that are kind of hard to it was hard for me anyhow to Mm -hmm. not really duplicate but to to kind of pull from his inspiration so anyhow i was just all over the map with this song i was so mad embarrassed furious at the time we had some like beef with a couple of the folks that didn't run the charity but like other bands and stuff and i was just ready to leave man it was just um i hate all that to say smith so bar (laughs) cursed yeah. Now, we're going to take one last break, and we're going to follow it up with our final uh, listener story for this week's episode. We'll return after these messages. It's a pretty good place. If you're a Martian. Or a vampire. Or a vampire. I think you really know what's happening around here, don't you? Don't you? Fighters for truth, justice, and the American way. Hey, this is Woody. And this is Tyler. And you're listening to That Would Be Rad. And now, back to our show. All right. This one, the listener would like to, well, the listener would like for us to just simply describe them as a listener. Mm -hmm. Okay? You ready? Hello, fellows. I had a very weird dream. I fell asleep rather quickly on February 3rd. Starting off in the dream, I felt as if there was a presence in my room. As if someone was standing over me, watching me sleep. Mm. In the dream, I awoke in my room where I spent all of my childhood. Moonlight was pouring through the window, and standing in front of the window was a very tall, elongated gray. Now, Mm. real quick, for those of you that are new to the show, he's referring to, or 
the listener is referring to an alien gray. Mm-hmm. Okay. Typical in- huge head, big black eyes, elongated limbs. Yep. Yep. B- back into it. A paralysis began to creep up my body, starting at my toes and spreading to my feet. I knew I had to escape, and I threw myself out of my bed and began crawling to my parents' room, which is just across the hall. As I crawled, the gray assured me that this will only take a minute. Mm. I made it into my parents' room. I managed to awake my dad by pulling myself up onto the bed as I couldn't use my legs to walk. My dad assured me that this will only take a minute. Oh, geez. And to, quote, remain as calm as you can. The gray had made it into the room, and my body went completely slack. They picked up my arm and were looking intently at my hands, focusing on my fingers. The gray extended one long finger and pressed the tip of its finger against mine. Its eyes blinked, and it was staring intently at the whorls of my fingertips. My dad assured me still it would only, quote, take a minute. This refrain was echoed again by the gray. Then the gray said, this will be over at 346. And I jolted awake. I looked over at my clock and it was exactly 346 a.m. Wow. He says, he goes on to say, weird, huh? It gets a bit strange. When I was relating this dream to my wife, she stopped me right away after I mentioned to her that the dream started with me feeling that there was a presence in the room. She had goosebumps on her arms as she related to me that she had felt the same thing as she was sleeping in the night. Mm. The next week, I experienced an interesting occurrence. I kept pulling splinters out of my index finger and thumb. Pretty weird, huh? Wow. Dude, that's awesome. That's that's just, that's incredible. And, uh, oof. Yeah, I mean, the, so this, like, sort of skeptic side of me, which typically loses the battle against sort of my believer side, but I've had sleep paralysis exactly one time. And so a lot of the things that, that this listener mentioned, my mind immediately goes to, oh, well, that's clearly sleep paralysis. Now, with my sleep paralysis, it's very sort of by the book. You know, it's like I kind of woke up, you sort of, um, there's almost like this, almost like tunnel vision in a way. They, they, well, I say that because they say that like, I think nine times out of 10, you, people that do encounter sleep paralysis is because you're, you're laying on your back when you're sleeping. And so, you know, you're kind of like, at least with me, I'm facing up, up and, you know, at the sky. Um, and I, it's like, it's kind of hard to explain because you're still a little bit in that like fugue state where you're kind of half awake, you're kind of half asleep. But I remember there being like this like shadow or like presence sort of in my periphery to like the left of the bed. It was like in the middle of summer, I wasn't feeling good. And for some reason, I just like laid you know, I was like 17 or 18 or something. I, just, I laid in my mom's bed and I remember feeling this, this like that there was a figure over in the corner. Uh, I didn't hear any speech or anything. And then there was like, which oddly enough, we talked about this on the last episode, but there was this like, this like humming, this like, mm. like oscillating kind of like low frequency kind of sound. And that's like a pretty you know, common kind of case of sleep paralysis. So yeah. I immediately go to that as far as like my skeptic side. However, I hey, do... real th- quick before you get there, I wanted to say for folks that... No, no, no. For folks that don't know much about sleep paralysis, and I'm actually one of those folks that I really don't know a whole lot about sleep paralysis. And so I, I want to make sure that folks listening are at least on the same page. So it is relatively simplistic in terms of the explanation. So it says sleep paralysis is a state during waking up or mm-hmm. falling asleep in which one is conscious but is unable to move or speak. Mm-hmm. And like you said, it's pretty common for folks to 
hear things like humming, hissing, static, mm-hmm. zapping, and buzzing noises are reported during sleep paralysis. Yep. Uh, other sounds such as voices, whispers, and even roars are also experienced. It has also been known that one may feel pressure on their chest and intense pain in their head during an episode. Old hag. These symptoms are usually accompanied by intense emotions such as fear and panic. People mm-hmm. also have sensations of being dragged out of bed or flying, numbness and feelings of electric tingles or vibrations running through their body. It also says that basically tr- like treatment and stuff is just, the study's just not great so far. Right. You know, I have never experienced that. I can't even imagine what it would feel like to be awake and not be able to move. That's, it's pretty scary. I mean, it's man. terrifying. It's real scary, yeah. Man. And the reason why, I, I thought you were going to go into this, but um, and this is just me paraphrasing, but the reason why is like, I guess when we we hit like our sort of deepest level of sleep, so we're in our sleep state, I think our brain sends like a chemical out to our body that puts us in like paralysis. That way we're, we're not like flailing around and going crazy when we dream, right? And so I think the general idea is like whenever you experience sleep paralysis, it's because your mind, like your brain is waking up faster than that chemical can like leave you. So you're still you're still physically like paralyzed. And then there's like a, you know, some sort of disconnect between your brain being like semi-awake, but then your body still being like paralyzed basically. Man, I got to dig into the physiological yeah, it's crazy. stuff. I mean, that sounds really interesting. Hmm. Yeah, but so that's my skeptical side. Now, my believer side, which has experienced a shadow person, if you will, was very different. And and your, your typical skeptics would look at that and say, oh, no, 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 that's just like another sleep paralysis. But I think there is something to, I don't know, I, I feel like this is such a, a an easy thing to just sort of be like ah eh, whatever it's just it's just sleep paralysis but yeah. there's something to you know it used to be called like the old hag syndrome and that's that's the pressure on your chest where some people would experience like an old woman sitting on their chest and like or like riding your chest mm, no i um, thought they called that a- <laughs> jesus <laughs> i don't even want to know what that is uh t- no this is different this is uh uh, but this is something that's <laughs> no. <laughs> this is different. This is something that that's been around f- for you know forever, kind yeah. of thing, like in human behavior, human nature. I do think that yes, there probably is something to the humming, the feeling that there's like a presence in the room. To me, that feels very sort of innocuous, and and it's like my my mind can sort of like take that as like, okay, well, yeah, maybe that is like a sleep paralysis type thing. But with what our listener was talking about, there's just so many like details that I feel like it's probably something more. Yeah. You know? I mean, especially since his wife had a similar feeling. Right, I don't know that there's, not that I know of anyway, I don't know that there is a uh, phenomenon about joint sleep paralysis. Yeah, that's really cool. You know, also within the dream the gray saying it was going to be over at 346 and then he looks at the clock it's 346 in the morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, I don't I don't know. I mean, I can I mean, I will say something that's interesting to me about all of this in terms of the physiology behind it all and, and it almost sounds like there's some sort of like the the heaviness on the chest, the chest pain, hearing strange sounds and feeling like you can't move. I mean, is there like like a heart are you having like a heart event? Hmm. You know, yeah. I mean, um, is that, you know, physically, now I'm not saying there isn't anything outside of the box causing that to happen, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But is that potentially, you know, where it kind of like physically sort of breaks down, like the physical components about why you feel these things. And even still, it's like, well, I mean, what's cool about that is you can still take that somewhat scientific approach and, and also say, well, look, if you're getting closer to uh, your body not working properly, it potentially getting you maybe, you know, opening that sort of opening in the veil, so to speak. Right. And that's why you're experiencing the other things. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I know that's kind of well, well, abstract, but. No, 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 no. I, I think, I, I think there, there could be, um, I, I think there could be 
both things actually going on. Like, so again, let's suspend our disbelief here and say, you know, maybe, maybe our listener was having like a, you know, very physical sort of thing, the, a, a very scientific sort of version of like sleep paralysis. So maybe they were, maybe their brain had sort of, you know, woken up and their body was still in that sleep paralysis thing. But then maybe the rest was actually a real thing, mm. which is, I mean, definitely pretty scary. Yeah. I did just just read this article a while back about, which I thought it was really interesting. It talks about like how your like hippocampus, the area in your brain, how it's it it's very good with like keeping things like ke- like keeping up with like like time, and mm-hmm. so that's the reason why like some people would say, oh man, every single night I'm waking up at three thirty three, or yeah. every or like it, it's part it sort of explains away the reason that like you know say you have like a big day at work or you have like oh man I got to be at this meeting it's why you're going to wake up. 10 minutes before your alarm even goes off, mm. you know? So I wonder if, I do wonder if, if looking at it completely from like a skeptical point of view, if that, if maybe it was more of like a dream and that sort of hippocampus thing was sort of kicking in with like, you're going to wake up at, you know, mm-hmm. three, whatever. But, but then again, I don't know, man, I, if, you know, the, the, the fact that like the wife, also claims kind of the same thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it, to me that leans almost into like, you know, we talk about it a lot with like the mass hallucination thing. It's like, I mean, is that like a simulation type thing? Or you, were yeah. you two? Or, or, I mean, we've talked about this too, where like I have, you know, again, most of this stuff like this, it's not essentially grounded with any study or thought that I've heard, but essentially I've got this like, personal belief sometimes or something that like I think about is like when you are connected with someone um and and to where your your life you're essentially like your lifeline has been is longer than it was before you were connected with that person Mm. does that make sense Mm -hmm. like I've now been married to my wife oh right right almost longer than you know, I was alive before meeting her kind of thing. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Not married yeah. to, but we've been together since. So yeah, it's like when there's that level of connection, I, I feel like sometimes there's ways that one person can, you know, feel or uh, get a sense for something that the other is going through. And I feel like women especially mm-hmm. are extremely sensitive to that kind of thing. I mean, mother's intuition, right? I mean, yeah. there are things that they can just tell you know, some folks are more sensitive than others. My mom is extremely sensitive, man. I mean, she can she can tell when things are not not right. Yeah, and I'm kind of that way. Well, no, no, no. I mean, your with, eyes, you're right. Your eyes start no, no. watering. And then, <laughs> no, no, no. With like like that sort of discernment, <laughs> your throat just grabs. Dude, it, it made such a weird noise. <laughs> but with like discernment, like walking into a room and you kind of, it's like this like little yeah. internal buzzer goes off that like, hey, man, that dude is like has a hat on that I should probably make fun of. Dude, come on. Or glasses that I should take off and throw across the room. God almighty. No, no, no. I, I, that's, that's a great point because my wife and I, which is funny because even if we're like in the biggest argument ever, I'll pick up on, and I feel like it used to only be like me, like, you know, you hear like sympathy pains and stuff. Also, there's a train going by, but, um, you know, you... I've always sort of been like empathic, like when I'm like really close to somebody and like say their stomach hurts, well, I'll start getting this weird, mild stomach pain sensation, even if I don't even, whether I do or don't even know if they're having like their stomach's hurting or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like my wife lately has started like picking up like the same thing. Like, uh, you know, she, so over the weekend I had this weird situation where I was watching the girls. My wife was up in New York we were having movie night. Everything was great. I went to like rub my eye and we're, you know, in the dark. We're in the quote unquote big bed, like mom and dad's bed, watching the movie. And like my eyes itching and I keep like rubbing my eye and like, you know, if your eye itches, you just like really go for it. And like, you're just scratching your eye. Yeah. Um, and it just kept going. And I noticed that like, um, you know, I'd do that thing where like the sleeve of my shirt, like, cause it just kept watering, you know? 
Here we go. And no, no, this is this is weird. I, I can't believe I didn't even tell you this. So I ended up going into the bathroom and I look in the mirror and dude, it looks awful. It looks like the outer layer of my eye is like peeling off. Instead of like a, a smooth circle, it's like wavy. The, I've never had this layer experience. of your eye. You mean your actual eyeball? So, um, making it up. I'll, I'm gonna send it to you right now. No, I don't want to see a picture of your eyeball, man. I mean, it is pretty gross. But uh, but anyway, it, apparently it's like a thing called chemosis, mm. uh, C H E M O I S I S, and it's just caused by like sometimes irritation or like trauma or whatever. Anyway, I end up having that, and then like my wife, who's all the way in New York out of nowhere, ends up having the same thing like 30 minutes later and her eye like won't stop watering and it gets extremely red. And it's it's just those like little things that it's mm-hmm. like, to me, those things, you know, I, I feel like if, if there's any, like anything real about like the simulation theory, I think, I think those things are like, there, there's something there, you know, that ties into that, I feel mm-hmm. like. But anyway, back to this dream or like experience. What do you think? Do you think the alien gray was like maybe just something ge- generated from like his imagination, his subconscious and stuff? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is a latent memory that's been locked away for some time, mm. and he's just remembering it. And you know, perhaps like. I don't know, man. I mean, truly, I, I don't know. It's funny because, like, sometimes when we talk about certain things on the show, or, or you know, if I watch, I'm very susceptible to like remember some of the things that I watch, and then having a dream that's somewhat built around that type of mm. scenario. But I never have that. talked My about. Wife does that. Oh man! I'm See sorry, that? guys. Welcome to the Tyler Show. <laughs> I thought you were seeing pictures. I just sent you with my eye. Oh no. God, I told you not to show them to well, him. Yet. I want you to see him because I don't think you believe. Oh yeah, I've seen that before. I was just saying, like, I, th- I that doesn't really happen to me, but but my wife does. Where if we watch something about serial killers, she's gonna have a a crazy dream. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it happens more rare nowadays, and it's never about like the actual thing. It's just almost like thematically, the dream kind of follows that. So yes, could that have happened to our listener? Mm-hmm. Absolutely, we know this listener pretty well now and that could be a potential also i kind of feel like this listener is kind of tuned in man to a lot of oh, things yeah. too like energies and i agree um you know i think that uh he can kind of vi- he can sense when something's different and and so mm-hmm. no matter what it's it's a very bizarre experience i'm sure and you know again one of the things I swear we've got to do an episode on it only if for own, if for no other reason than for me to just dive in and learn more about it is just dreams in general. I, I want to explore so many different theories and, mm-hmm. and all of that. I found this article um, about dreaming actually, and I'm just going to read the abstract just as like a little sort of like, you know, uh, I guess, context into why I want to dive into dreams and stuff. And it says, dreaming has been well studied by psychologists, anthropologists, and neurophysiologists. Yet, few models to date, except for Alexa Chung, have really attempted to explain the spatial domain, temporal zone, and energetic substances of the dream state. Space, time, and energy are all important concepts studied in physics. This paper presents a useful model by implementing some pertinent ideas from theoretical physics and mathematics to explain how the waking and dreaming states can be directly experienced through multiple dimensions of both space and time. Furthermore, these dimensions are accessed almost effortlessly simply by shifting into other states of consciousness that closely resemble waking and dreaming. Mm -hmm. Such states include hypnagogic, hypnopompic, reverie, and daydreaming. Mm -hmm. Although the realm of each of these discrete states has a distinct uniqueness, experiencing perceptual imagery is what all of these states share in common. In this multidimensional model, sensation and imagination represent two vital abilities of perception. Now, if you're a dork like me, 
That's yeah. that's definitely going to wet your your whistle. I mean, and that I don't sounds know kind that of, that's the that's phrase. not the. <laughs> <laughs> no, if uh, if you're anything like us, you're equally fascinated by that, and so I, it's a really um, well, it's not super long, but it's like a twenty page. Um, Scientific paper, so it's well, going to take sounds... me a little bit to uh, to dive through. But it's written so far that I can tell very good, very well, and it's. I mean, it touches on things like the dream time tradition of Australia, mm, um, I love the, that stuff. the um, uh, ancient Chinese dreams and biblical dreams and mm. people that could interpret dreams and and all that stuff. So so cool. It to me, it's always been that. Uh, like I always, I mean, like, I don't remember who we were talking with not too long ago, but we were talking about like, how cool would it be if you could just like tap into your dream, record them and then, and then watch them back. I do think that, uh, wait, dreams, Chinese. While you're thinking of that, man, cause you mentioned CERN every now and then, and we kind of joke back and forth about, or at least I do. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're definitely. What's what's an interesting concept is, you know, you know, because they're dealing with things like dark matter and and creating Mm -hmm. things from nothing, the God particle, things like this. Mm -hmm. What if, and here's a crazy theory, what if them doing this in the future or in our timeline and all that kind of stuff created and opens all of these other dimensions, right? Mm -hmm. That we previously have dreamt about, and that's what gets our consciousness to, I I don't know. Like, it starts to get a little bit. Difficult to kind of trace all the lines, you know, and make them connect. But regardless, like the idea of our consciousness being able to, well, I mean, just leave the the state that we're in, going from waking to asleep, mm-hmm. is fascinating enough, man. And the fact that our brain is powerful enough to create a world that feels like we're in it, yeah, right, when we're asleep, right. Is very, it's just, how does our brain know that it needs to entertain us while it's like recharging? Right, right. Well, I, you know, and I mean, to me, that gets into like, well, is this the actual dream? Is like right. our, you know, and, and you and I have talked about this at length before, but it's like that, you know, when you wake up feeling like, oh man, I feel like I miss this person that I was with in my dream. And like, mm-hmm. uh, so, you know, there's a lot of sort of, um, sort of different ways of thinking as far as that. I, I will say that uh, the our listener, you know, and again, like, I guess I'm kind of playing the skeptic today here, uh, and I'm not shutting any of it down, but to me, the, the paralysis in the dream feels more, feels less like sleep paralysis and more like that, you know, there's that like common feeling in dreams where you're like, you're trying to get away and it's like you're you feel like you're moving through like jello or like mm. it's that weird like you can't quite get like your motion like going it's like you're very mm-hmm. like Ugh, and you're trying your hardest like to me that that feels more like that which i mean again maybe that you know if we're suspending our disbelief and if this was a type of you know possible extraterrestrial, whatever the grays are, maybe that's just another tool that's used, you know, when we think that we're just like dreaming, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I do think that, again, his wife having the same thing, to me, that takes it in a completely different direction. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to explain through that, you Mm -hmm. know, or explain away that anyway. Yeah, exactly. I mean, all in, what a bag of mail that we got this week, man. And oh, yeah. like I said at the top of the show, it's kind of one of those things that was like all signs pointing to like, look, man, we need to tell these people's story, mm-hmm. introduce our other listeners to these stories. And uh, I mean, man, it's it's one of those things, folks, if you're listening to this show and you've had, and you got to kind of comb through your memory a little bit. I mean, like I said, when we were talking about, you know, us being on a road that dead, you know, an interstate that dead end, mm-hmm. that dead ended. Is that how you say it, right? Dead they ended. had a dead end. Yep. I had completely forgot about that. And Tyler, you did too, right? I mean, oh, I started I talking about totally it. Totally forgot about that. Yeah. So it's like you listening, you might have experienced something that was just slightly strange or like, man, that was weird. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is, man, even the smallest, 
thing, reach out to us, you know, and, and let us know because not only do we want to share it, but like I said, we, we also love to get to know you guys and gals and, uh, and it's just part of the reason why we love having this podcast. Oh yeah, absolutely. If you would like to tell us a story or uh, leave a comment, you can do so over on the Instagrams. That's where the bulk of our sort of social media activity is. Drop us a DM, you know, jump in the comment section. If you do want to tell us something that's more long form, head on over to that would be radpod at gmail.com. Uh, or even better, leave it in your own voice by l- giving us a, uh, like leaving a voice memo over on our site. That would be radpodcast.com. You know, just let us know if you do leave your voice memo. You know, we would love to have your voice on the show and we'll put cool background music and sound design and, and all that behind it. Uh, but if not, just let us know and, you know, we can read your story uh, much like we did today. Leave us a five-star review on whatever podcatcher that you're using to listen to this podcast. Tell a single friend about the show. Buy us a coffee, buy us some merch. Even better than all those, join our awesome Patreon, The Rabbit Trail, uh, where we get loose. Even more loose, if that's possible. If this main feed just isn't enough and you want a little more of That Would Be Rad, head on over and join us. Uh, There's many tiers, and uh, we'd love to have you. You got anything else, Woody? I think that's it, man. Right on, man. Well, we love you, we appreciate you, and as always, be rad. That's the way it goes.
was granted. All right. So, dude, this, this, sorry about that, but dude, this thing is, the rear axle is, like, there is something heavy in the back. Mm-hmm. You can tell. Yeah, man. It's, I mean, look at the wheel well in the front, like the distance. Yeah, I know, man. And then I the know. back. I know. I, I mean, we're going to let the <laughs> listeners see this thing because it's just. That's so cool, man. Mm. I mean, would you walk up to it at night? Oh, you're damn right I would. Man, I, I'm just making myself sound like such a pans, but I just don't have room for a lot of risk these days. I'm just like, nah, that's cool, man. But somebody else tell me about it. Okay. Well, you know, the other day we were talking about Alexa, Ch- Alexa Chung, and I mean, I had a dream about her, so what does that mean, you know? Jesus. My favorite kind, or, or, you know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Does, know. That, really ha- does that really happen? <laughs> Jesus. 